time because we have to leave. I want you to begin to just put your hands together for the one and the only one, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the everlasting God, the great I am, who did something in your life in the last three days. Come on, put your hands together and say, Lord, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for the things that you have indeed done. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. But in case you have not given your life to Christ, this is one more opportunity. Heaven is knocking at your heart's door one more time. Right? So, if there's somebody in this place, okay, keep your eyes open, okay? We're not recruiting somebody into dying. We're recruiting someone into eternal life. All right? So, keep your eyes open. So, if there's somebody in this place who says, Brother, you know what? I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. Okay? I haven't committed my life to Him. I've been a part of this, but I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. Is there anybody like that in this place? If that, because you've got to like, just stand up, my friend. Just stand up. Just stand there for a second. Anybody else before we, we close? Anybody else who want to accept Christ? One more opportunity. Don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. Anybody else? Yeah, two. Quickly, somebody. Anybody else? Heaven is waiting for you. This is your moment. Yeah, praise God for that. Anybody else? God bless you. Anybody else? Anybody else at all? Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus name I pray. Somebody shout a big amen. amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Hey, today is your birthday, okay? Write it down. Today is your birthday. Because now, you're, you're kind of on a mountain top, but you'll be going down to the valley. Alright? You're going back to your schools and your colleges and your homes. Things at back home, things back in your valley is not changed. Alright? When you go back to your friend circle, they have not changed. But there's somebody who's changed and that's you. Alright, remember that. The Lord has brought you to instruct you and, and to feed you with these words. That when you get back to the, your place, nothing has changed except you. So it is very important that you will reflect the nature and the quality of God. Because you're the child of God in these areas. Am I making sense to you? Don't expect things to change. The only thing which has changed is deep inside you the Lord has done a great work do you believe that if you believe that lift your hands and say hallelujah to the Lord what God has called you to do okay Thank now you. you were all here enjoying worship right did you enjoy the worship right did you enjoy worship did you enjoy Ebi leading us into a time of song and praise did you enjoy the team sing to us it was wonderful amen it was glorious but I want to let you know the word worship I want to give you a very deeper meaning to the word worship and when I say worship, what basically comes to your mind? Uh, most likely what comes to your mind would be, you know, lights like this. Of course, no smoke in this place, right? Lights and uh, lifted up hands and just singing, Lord, I worship you songs, which is very good. But I want to redefine for you the word worship based on scripture. All right. So listen to me completely. And then you'll understand what my, my heart is all about. Number one. I mean, Abby, if you had edited Abby's class, uh, he would have given you what he said was. The word worship means worth-ship. Comes from two words. Worth-ship. You worship God because he's worthy to be praised. Am I right on that? You know, he's worthy. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord Almighty. You worship him because of that. But I want to let you know three areas the word worship is mentioned in the Bible. Of course, there are many areas. I picked up three. And these three areas will tell you, worship is not just limited to the four walls in a building. That means, there has to be an integration with worship as to what we are singing with our lives. And this is basically my heart even this morning. Alright. Number one, singing a set of songs is not just worship. All right, singing a set of songs is not worship. All right, if you can come and sing all the 10 songs beautifully here and leave this campsite, go back home and do drugs, your worship is invalid. There's no worship. I'm trying to give you the true meaning of worship. If you listen to all that we have said here and go back and watch porn again, there's no point. You're not worshiping. You may lift your hands. It seems as if you're worshiping, but it's not true worship because true worship is not just singing a set of songs. 
Just because I do something repeatedly does not make me something. Listen to me very carefully. Just because I lift my hands and worship does not make me a worshiper. Very quiet. Very quiet. See, what am I trying to tell you? Three important things. You can write this down if you can. Number one, there must be an integration of what is worship and your life. When I mean life must be integrated, the question is, why do I do what I do? All right, the question is what? Why do I do what I do? See, there's an interesting story in the book of Matthew 20. Don't get there, but I'll tell you what happened in Matthew's gospel chapter 20. Matthew's gospel chapter 20 and verse 20 onwards, the Bible says the mother of Zebedee, Zebedee's sons came to Jesus and the Bible says in the King James Version that she worshipped Jesus and then she asked him, Lord, can my son sit on your right and on the left and the left hand side in your kingdom? What did the Lord Jesus say? Anybody? Does anybody know what, what Jesus said? <laughs> that's, that's fair enough. The Lord says, I'm sorry, I cannot grant you your request. This woman, she came in worship, but she asked the wrong thing. You get my point? She came to Jesus and asked him of the wrong thing. We can be so accustomed to doing something that we can keep doing this without actually living a life of worship. Am I making sense to you? Am I making sense to you? I can, just because I can preach, all right, I'm so accustomed to preaching, but am I preaching the heart of God or am I just, just because I can preach, I'm preaching. The heart of the matter is the matter of the heart. Number two, just because you can sing, are you singing just because you can sing? Because you're accustomed to singing or is it because of true worship that I am doing what I'm called to do? Hang in with me. I'm going to give you another good example. The Bible says in the book of Genesis 4, 5, don't turn there. It says, God respected Abel. You know Abel, right? In the Bible, Cain and Abel. God respected Abel and his offering. So what you do is also important. It's just not what you, what you just say. It is what you do. Your actions are very important. After leaving this camp, and if you do stuff which is not, we've told you not to do. All that you've done here in lifting your hands in worship is a waste of time. I'm going to give you these very one last lines of warning. Lest you think I have worshipped God and things are going to be fine with me. It will be, provided you stick into the framework of what we've been speaking to you. Within the confines of God's word. The Bible says, God did not respect Cain and his offering. So, what you do is of equal importance. Please go and worship God, just not with songs. Songs are good. Why? The songs that we sing in the church is a small bit of our expression of gratitude unto God. That's why we can stand and say, Lord, I bless your name. I lift your name on high. Amazing. Praise God for that. But if your life is not in sync with your intentions and the motives of your heart, all that we can do is just sing a couple of songs and go back. Our lives will not be the same. And these are some sense? important warnings that I want to leave with you. So number one, worship and your life. Life meanings, meaning why I do what I do. The why is the reason I do this? It must be integrated. Write That's this down if you can. Worship and work must be integrated. Let me explain that to you. Do you know that every single one of you have an assignment from God? Will you say amen to that? Yesterday I told you, all of you have an, somebody say assignment. Assignment is what? God has brought you here with a purpose. Noah had an assignment. Abraham has an assignment. You have an assignment. And that's defined as work. Do you know the difference between work and a job? Is that the same or what? He said, my work is to the will of the Father. His work, his calling was to do the will of the Father. All right, so let me put it this way. A bird, all right, you've seen birds, right? When a bird flies in the sky, what is it doing? All right, it's flying, of course. But technically speaking, it is fulfilling its work. It's fulfilling its assignment. So every single one of you have an assignment from God. All right, so what is true worship? A bird flies in the sky. 
okay and a bird flies in the sky and what is it doing it is actually worshiping god because it is doing what god created it to do am i making sense so what is worship in your life i may sing and bless the lord and do all these things but if i am not fulfilling the role of god the call of god in my life i am not a true worshiper as a matter of fact jesus said in the book of john chapter 4 that the lord is seeking true worshipers somebody say true worshipers so that means there are a set of false worshipers people who come and worship god and do that but they're calling god has called them for something but they're doing something that's why i keep telling people make sure you understand the call of god on your life when you do what god has called you to do you are a worshiper amen to that if you do what god has called you to do what are you doing you are worshiping all right it's interesting the book of acts chapter 16 let's not turn there the bible says paul and silas were put to jail right the both of them are thrown into jail and what were they doing in jail the bible says the reason they were there is because there was a girl who was demon possessed and they got the demon out and those people who were controlling this girl and making money out of her they were so upset because you know this girl became normal again they threw paul and silas falsely accused them and threw them in jail now Paul and Silas did do nothing wrong they were in jail but the Bible says something very interesting in verse number 25 of Acts chapter 16 it says but at midnight I like that word midnight in the darkest hour but at midnight Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God there was no one to lead them into worship no keyboardists no worship team nothing but the Bible says they sang praises unto God that was worship because they were flowing in their calling. Do you get my, my point? Your work is what you're assigned to do. When Adam was created, God gave him a work. Amen. So what's a job? A job is something that you do. Like for example, what's your job? I'm okay. What is your job? I work for an IT company. That's a job. That's not a work. Listen very carefully. Don't get confused with work and job. Work is your calling. Job is what you do. Jesus Christ's call was to do the will of the Father, but his job was a carpenter. Am I making sense? My job was I was working for an airline company. That was my job. That was my work. My work is what I'm doing now. Your job rather is helping you in fulfilling the assignment of the call of God on your life. Will you say amen to that? I was working for the airline. So what did the airline do for me? It took me different places. So I went, did this, made my contacts and came back. So now what happened? Because of my job, my work is established. So today I travel, not as an airline employee. I travel as a child of the Almighty God, as a preacher man to different places. And now my job has enhanced my work. Am I making sense to you? Am I making sense? So please have a job till you figure out your work. Very, very important. The Bible says that at night, Paul and Silas sang praises unto God. All right. What did they do? Sing praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And because of that, the jailer and his family came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. If you read the whole story. Number three. Number three is your worship and your walk. Somebody worship and walk. Worship. Somebody say worship and walk must be integrated all right what was the first thing i told you worship and life that means your intentions and your motives why do i worship god why do i sing is it for people to say wow great 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 job because god looks at your heart the heart of the matter is the matter of the heart number two i said worship and work that means if i am doing what god has called me to do i am a true worshiper the last but definitely not the least worship and walk is integrated the interesting word of worship is is found in the book of genesis chapter 22 don't turn there when god almighty the god of heaven and earth he spoke to abraham and said to abraham abraham he says yes lord he says take your son and go to a mountain i will show you and sacrifice him there and the bible says he took his son that was amazing by itself no time to explain he takes his son to this mountain and he has come with a set of his servants and listen to this please <clears throat> he says to the servants please wait here i and my son 
will go to this mountain and we will worship and we will come back listen to me very carefully the bible says he uses the word worship right there he was going to what do what sacrifice the son right that's what jesus what the lord said bring your son to do what sacrifice him for me but the bible says he went there and the lord and he says to his servants i and my son we're going to go up there and we're going to do what louder no keyboard no guitar no one to encourage you to lift your hands but the bible defines that as worship you know what worship true worship is is your living of your life if god has asked you to do something better do it that is true worship some of us are holding on to things and, and i mean how can you be worshiping unless you let go and say god you are everything to me some of us are wondering oh my career on one side if i let go my career oh i don't know what will happen to me holding on to the career you know god is calling you but you hold on to your career but today i, I believe in pray true worship is what happened in the life of abraham when he took his son up to the mountain and he said god i'm going to worship you by letting go my son but truthfully and honestly god didn't want to accept his son i think the lord was actually doing a a melodrama in the same spot many many thousands of years ago the lamb of god died this time there was no substitute jesus christ himself died for you and me on the cruel cross of calvary in the same mountain range the mountain range of calvary tonight this morning before we leave i want to pray with you all right so i'm going to ask you to close your bibles and stand to your feet just three important points i was out i'm going to be out of your way number 1 what is the important thing your life and the worship that you do and your life must be everybody just worship god lift your voices close your eyes worship god hallelujah this is a part of the big picture of worship when you say lord i this is good my brother please just misunderstand me what you are doing here is very good lifting your hands and worshiping the creator is amazing but it must be backed up with an integration of my life that means the motives of my life why am i doing this ask yourself this question why am i doing what i am doing am i doing this just to get popular am i doing this just to somebody to like me what am i doing it for hey god is looking at your heart huh you can fool people i fooled my pastor i could fool my pastor he was he thought i was a great guy but i knew in my heart my motives were not right and though i stood up and lifted my hands and said praise the lord it was not true worship because worship is an integration of your life and worship which means why do i do what i do please close your eyes everybody number 2 your worship should be integrated with your assignment or work i may stand all day long all night long and worship god sing so beautifully hit the highest notes that anybody can be a great worship i am sure you can never talk me out of this this is my calling till the day i die i know this is my calling and you know what and that's why i can stand and tell you boldly i'm a worshipper i may not sing songs as beautifully as you guys do but i'm worshiping god because i'm doing what god has called me to do so you need to figure out what god has called you to do take time just don't live this christian life from sunday to sunday once in a year camp just be a nice person find out what god has got for you he's got a great plan for your life my brother my sister he's got an amazing plan even before you were born the bible says in the book of jeremiah chapter 1 verse number 5 before you were born i called you to be a prophet to the nations every eye closed please right now in this place i prophesy prophets to come forth if that's you you better say an amen I prophesy evangelists to come forth. If that's you say an amen. I prophesy songwriters to come forth. If that's you say an amen. I command in the name of Jesus entrepreneurs, business people to come forth to to be supportive to the body of Christ. If that's you say an amen. God is calling you to high positions. There's some of you God is calling you to high positions. To be in established government places, high positions. just like joseph and he became number 2 in the land everything that he did had value some of us this is what the lord is saying some of you you know in the very low rung you're trying to influence people that is why it is not working 
your influence is too small because you are too small in that area the Lord wants you to rise up because as you become prominent what you say makes sense when I became the manager of the airline company I took my guys out for a meal and told them about Jesus and they had to listen to me because I was their boss God wants you to rise up my brother my sister if there's somebody who's got the heart to say I will rise up somebody say amen to that if that's you this morning God is calling you to be a great person Speci I, I, I'm hearing the word to specialize I don't know what it means specialize specialize in some area specialists something I haven't even thought about specialists God is calling some of you to be the specialists in that one area the area nobody has tapped before God wants you to tap that area if that's you say an amen business people rise up in the name of Jesus worshipers rise up in the name of Jesus evangelists rise up in the name of Jesus prophets rise up in the name of Jesus pastors rise up in the name of Jesus evangelists rise up in the name of Jesus some of you are called to go to those areas where nobody has dared to go before God is calling you to something amazing to rescue people from the prisons and dungeons if that's you say an amen that's me hallelujah God is calling me I want you all of you lift your hands I want to prophesy come on receive it okay Lord in the name of Jesus I prophesy great things out of these young people I am Lord I prophesy in this army they will rise up the Lord David's which will slay the Goliath I prophesy in the name of Jesus that there will not be one insignificant person here they will all rise up to the calling of God on their life they'll rise and shine they will shake this nation if that's you somebody say amen oh your amen can be louder heaven is hearing you I said I'm going to, God is calling you to be the shakers of this nation somebody God is calling somebody here to do something nobody has done before lift your hands and summon yourself to God and as we're going to sing this song say Lord I humble myself I commit myself to be a true worshiper somebody say true worshiper with my life with my lips with my assignment with my thoughts with my hearts and with my motives just worship God